So can you use the term Asperger's or is it completely taboo? I'm talking about all of that and more right now. Guys, welcome back to the Asperger world. My name is Dan and I have autism and ADHD. I make weekly videos all about this stuff. So if you want to stay in the loop with everything that's going on, autism related, make sure to hit that subscribe button by hitting the notification bell down below to stay in with me on this journey. Now, guys, I was originally diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome back in 2013, just before the DSM took Asperger's and pushed it into autism spectrum disorder. Now, the reason they did this in 2013 for the DSM-5, which is one way of diagnosing neurological conditions, and then it's the CDI, I think, um, CDI-11, or the IDC-11, I'm not entirely sure of the nomenclature of that, basically means that there are two different diagnostic papers. Now, that was done in 2019, and then the other one was done in 2013. Well, what happened is they took Asperger's syndrome and they put the term into autism spectrum disorder simply because some of the characteristics of uh, people who has who were diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome were coming out with misdiagnosis and they were getting left out of um, accessible or accessibility to support for people with autism because Hans Asperger in 1942 was doing research on young boys who had social communication impairment issues um, but also had language which was quite interesting whereas Leo Kanner um, who was also doing this study in 1942 was actually doing it um, on people who were like non-verbal and non-speaking and kind of like what you would call the classic autism which is another term that people don't really use these days. Now that being said Asperger's was a diagnosis that was formed in the mid 80s uh, by I think it was coined by Lana Wing who had kind of read Hans Asperger's research on autism and stuff like that and decided that the, the research that Hans was doing um, was actually put into practice then said okay well this characteristic set could be called Asperger's syndrome so we can kind of identify what we're looking at here which kind of makes up the autism spectrum you know you got people who are like savants uh, all the way to like ADHD people and then people who have like verbal autism non-verbal autism like there's there's a whole host that's why it's a spectrum right and it's been like that forever. Now, the nomenclature um, had changed, but it doesn't mean it was taken away. It's not as if everybody who had the diagnosis of Asperger's was simply like told, you can't use that anymore. You use autism spectrum disorder. It doesn't work like that. And a lot of people identified with it. There was a big uproar in about 2018 where Hans Asperger, um, there was some issues were printed in, in a book um, where he was found to be doing stuff with like eugenics and um, trying to kill people who were or, or allowing the killing of people who were genetically not superior there was all, all weird time in the 1930s you know you gotta think you know nazi germany and all this kind of stuff was going on really bizarre time um now hans asperger was not a nazi he was never part of the nazi party and didn't work directly for the nazis however he was affiliated with german national socialist groups but not the nazi party which is a big misconception that people always get wrong now, regardless of Hans Asperger's history, his research and his papers on it were really interesting because it highlighted a lot of characteristics in males specifically on the autism spectrum at that time. And that research then obviously was you know, republished and people read it and became the basis of what was then the Asperger's syndrome part of the autism spectrum. But just like we do with VW cars who were, you know, Volkswagen, the people's car, which was designed by Hitler and the guy from Porsche, um, we don't say that all cars made by Porsche and, and VW are kind of like Nazis. We just kind of say, oh, we move past the ridiculousness and we, we now move on and we move forward with those companies just like we do with Fanta by Coca-Cola. That was a Nazi party sponsored drink. Uh, Hugo Boss were made the Nazi uniforms. Um, Siemens Electronics built the gas chambers. We don't hold these companies um, in their old format. They they move on and, and they evolve and they, they say, okay, well, you know, that was a ridiculous time. What on earth are we thinking? The company's not like that anymore. And the same with the term Asperger syndrome. It doesn't refer to people being, you know, used for eugenics and, and the mass um, genocide of, of autistic individuals. It basically means there's a set of characteristics that we're giving to a person for a diagnosis for a certain amount of time. Now, that being said, I posted a video on threads. So if you haven't followed me on threads, go check me out on threads. And it was talking about my diagnosis and I'd use the term Asperger syndrome. And a bunch of people got on at me saying, you, the Asperger syndrome doesn't exist anymore, which is incorrect because of course it exists. You know, just because they merged it into autism spectrum disorder doesn't mean anything. It still exists if your paper still says Asperger syndrome on it, you still identify as that. And I interrupt this video to let you guys know that if you are struggling with mental health and you want to seek professional help like counseling or somebody to listen to and talk to, that is an amazing app called BetterHelp. Now, BetterHelp actually is an online platform where you can either text or you can video or you can have just typing audio or whatever you want to communicate with your counselor or therapist. They have people who specialize in all areas from like I used it when I was 
you know, in need of counseling and they found someone who specialized in autism and ADHD. Now, if you're interested, there's a link down below where you can go check out BetterHelp as well. And if you use that link, it kind of helps me out a little bit too. So it's kind of cool. Now, BetterHelp will find you once you've registered. They will find you a therapist within two days or less, which is amazing. It took them, I think, 24 hours to find me a therapist and I was booked in and it's highly affordable and you can do it from the comfort of your own home. So I just thought if anyone is struggling with mental health issues, there you go. Check out BetterHelp, link below. Okay, guys, back to the video. And then the other thing is that they then said, oh, it's it's toxic and it's harmful. Well, it was never taken out of the DSM or the IDC because it was harmful. They just thought that it was easier to make a um, access to support for the people who were getting diagnosed. And they thought also the spectrum disorder was an easier way to blanket cover everybody in that kind of set of diagnostic criteria. Now, I love a free world and an open thinking world. Using the term Asperger's syndrome isn't toxic or harmful to anybody. It's just a name. It's just nomenclature. And the longer we suppress the ability of someone to use the term Asperger's syndrome, then we are not doing anything and we are not making any progress. We are actually, in fact, going backwards and suppressing our own community. There's a big issue where we live in a world where everyone needs to be accepting. Like we have, you know, pronouns that are you know, in the hundreds now. You know, we have people who want to identify this, that way or the other. And that is fine because whatever you feel do it because it's all about being happy in life and if you want to identify like that then go for it but those same people then come after us and say you can't use the term asperger syndrome you're toxic and they start bullying me and i felt quite bullied online actually by people telling me i couldn't use the term asperger well guys i'm here today to tell you that you can use the term asperger syndrome people still get diagnosed with other forms of nomenclature uh, diagnostic criteria for the term asperger syndrome around the world in other parts and you know People who were diagnosed before 2013 with Asperger's syndrome, they don't suddenly just disappear. They still have that and they still have the diagnosis. So go ahead, use Asperger's syndrome. If you have an issue with it, then it's your issue. Just like if I have an issue with um, people wearing orange clothes, then it's my issue. But, you know, it, there's nothing to do with that. I don't have an issue with people wearing orange clothes. I'm just using it as a ridiculous example. It doesn't hurt me, it doesn't harm me in any way. It doesn't harm my community. It's just a tale. It's just how somebody wants to identify and we should respect that. We are here, we are accepting, we are open, and we are honest. That is exactly what the autism community is. So I, for one, am telling you, it's fine. Use the term Asperger's syndrome. I don't care, and neither should you. And nobody else should know or care about what your business is. And something else probably a lot of people don't know is I ran a poll of all my social media networks. So we have like 400,000 plus, so almost on 500,000 followers across all the networks, and we ran a poll on every single one. Now, the information we got back from the poll, the poll basically stated, do you have a problem with the autism community using the term Asperger's syndrome or Asperger's? 83 plus percent of all the people on the poll said they have no issues with the term Asperger's, and it doesn't bother them at all. So what I've now come to conclusion the understand is that there's only a small minority of people who have an issue with it anyway that being said guys if you enjoyed this video and think it's important please share it give it a like it really means a lot to me and i'd love to know your thought vote or, or comments comment down below in the comment section of this video because i think it's very important that we put this message out and i will see you in another video guys peace